We're going to start with something really important, which is the latest student research from Sybil. Um, they are a research consultancy part of GTI, and every year um, they survey 100,000 students across the UK and Ireland, a huge group on their career aspirations and employer destinations of choice. And I think if we're going to talk about careers, young people, mental health, then we really need to start off with the facts and understand what the current situation is. And that's why it's so important that this talk is first. So I'd like to welcome on stage Elisa Maris, who is head of research at Sybil, who's going to share the latest student research on university life and mental health. So please give her a big hand. everyone um, and yes I am the head of research at Sybil um, and so what we do is we survey students so predominantly university students um, about lots of different things but mainly their careers but also their mental well-being um, so in my presentation today I'm going to be using um, kind of data insights um, from two of our um, major studies that we do so one of those is our student mental health um, research um, so the latest one uh, latest is study that we carried out um, had over 12,000 respondents um, from university students and graduates. Um, and we also run a graduate research um, um, study every single year. And that's mainly focused on um, careers, so what students want to do after they leave um, university. Um, and the latest study for that um, had 65,000 respondents across all of the UK, um, universities in the UK. So it's sort of the largest study of its kind. Um, but both of these have kind of insights around mental health, student mental health in particular. Um, and I'm going to throw out, mention kind of two phrases. So one phrase is going to be mental health condition. And when I say that, that is from um, the graduate survey that we do. Um, and that is basically if someone in the survey has identified, self-identified with a mental health condition, um, that is a disability. Um, that's what I mean by that. Um, whereas another phrase I'm going to use is directly touched by mental health. Um, and that is from the student mental well-being study. And that we kind of measure in a little bit more detail. So that is anyone that has experienced at least three indications of essentially negative thinking in the last year. Um, or they've experienced suicidal feelings, um, or they've experienced um, kind of mental health difficulties in the past or currently. So that's a combination of all of that. So not necessarily that they've identified with a disability, but have experienced some sort of um, mental well-being difficulties. Um, but what, the, what do these studies find? What do these studies show? So we've been doing the graduate research for a number of years now. Um, and what we're finding is the proportion of students that say um, that they have a mental health condition under that disability question is increasing. So this might just be genuinely because there are pro proportionally more students with these difficulties. It might be that students kind of there's kind of more of a social acceptance um, around kind of identifying um, with these kind of conditions or um, you know it might just be kind of the awareness is increasing and that's um, kind of um, people are more aware of their uh, mental health conditions and more aware that it is actually a disability. Um, having said that when we compare this figure with our mental health study, we find in our mental health study that the majority of students um, um, have a mental health difficulty of some kind. And so 13% um, with a mental health disability in the previous study versus 80% is a big, kind of big difference. And what that really means is, yes, people are going through mental health difficulties, and most of, the, most of these students are, um, but they're not necessarily associating it with a disability. So what are the impacts um, of mental well-being? Uh, and what we find in our mental health research is that proportionally more students that have been touched by mental health so have experienced some sort of mental health difficulty are proportionally more likely um, to say that they feel like they're just not good enough, um, they have trouble concentrating, um, trouble sleeping. And so, you know, these things really impact day-to-day -day life, particularly when you're a student um, and, you know, you have a lot of different priorities, you have a lot of deadlines, you might be applying for jobs, you know, uh, uh, and all of that kind of com comes together and kind of affects anxieties. And what's also kind of linked to this is friendships and loneliness. So students that um, ex uh, have been touched by mental health, uh, um, you know, that they've experienced those difficulties, are proportionally more likely to say that they don't have any true friends at university, um, proportionally more likely to say they feel lonely or kind of have a low happiness score. So again, you know, this affects kind of day-to-day um, -day life and kind of adds to anxieties. 
And this is where we kind of link it to careers, because when we um, compare students with a mental health condition um, with total, they're proportionally more likely um, to say that they think it will be really tough to get a graduate um, um, job. So they're sort of less confident in their sort of career aspirations there. And I think a lot of this is to do with anxiety, because when we kind of again compare um, this, these students with a mental health condition compared to total, proportionally more of them are more likely to say that um, you know just thinking about careers makes them anxious. Um, you know, having anxiety around that probably means you're less likely to attend um, you know careers fairs, kind of workshops, um, and that is also the case. That's also what we see um, in our survey. And again, this anxiety um, leads students to be proportionally more likely to drop out of assessment uh, um, kind of methods. So they're more likely to drop out of the recruitment process. And when we ask students why, um, it sort of again links to anxiety. So, you know, kind of going through that recruitment process increases their level of anxiety. Um, you know, the, the level of anxiety that they feel supersedes what they feel like they're going to get out of the job or their kind of desire for that job makes them panic, makes them stressed out, feels like they can't focus, you know, and again, these are all the reasons why um, um, kind of we see how mental health kind of links to that career. However, it's not all bad news. What we do find if, if you go to a university where you feel like you have a really supportive environment, where you feel like there is mental well-being services, um, where you feel like your careers advisors or the university uh, leadership team or university lectures, where you feel like um, they're supportive, they're human, um, those students um, have better mental health um, outcomes. So students that feel like they don't have a supportive environment, they're proportionally more likely to say they don't have any true friends, currently experiencing difficulties, you know, have a low happiness score, I feel like their mental health has declined since starting university, um, or just kind of haven't spoken to anyone about their mental health. So that was kind of a snapshot um, of the kind of findings that we found from both of those studies. Um, but to summarise, um, the majority of students experience mental uh, health difficulties, and that is actually increasing, um, and that sort of links with loneliness, happiness, friendships. Um, Students are concerned about their career opportunities. Most students are. Those with mental health difficulties um, sort of proportionally more likely to think that, and that kind of is linked to anxiety and it makes them drop out. However, supportive kind of networks can really help um, with mental health. Um, but before I leave you, um, I just want to, you know, obviously thank you for listening. Um, but also, we are currently in field for our graduate survey. So, you know, this is your opportunity to fill in the survey for this year and kind of have your voice heard. Um, um, and you know, we talk to, we, we show these results to employers, to universities, and this is how you can really make a difference um, 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 in this space. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Gonna... Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. That was really, really interesting, actually. Lots of things that I wasn't aware of in that. Um, and I think that just shows you, doesn't it, how, how everything is interrelated. We can't section off you know, our careers, our jobs, from our mental health, from our relationships, from you know, how we feel about ourselves, our self-esteem. We, you know, we're, we're all, everything is interlinked. We're not, we're not just parts with we're, we're the total sum of everything. So really, really interesting. And actually really important to know the facts and know how students feel. So actually we can get the right support. We can react to that and we can kind of support you in terms of how you feel. So um, thank you so much. I'm really delighted now to introduce um, Louise Goworth from Student Minds, an organization that I am a big fan of. I've done lots of stuff to support them on social media, I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, so Louise from Student Minds on stage, she's a trustee, a quality expert, she's a recent TEDx speaker, um, she's also the program manager for Student Space. Student Space is an online mental health platform provided by Student Minds alongside the government and is available to higher education students across the UK um, and I can't wait to hear what she has to say. So Louise, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, so I'm Louise, uh, pronouns she, her. I'm the program manager at Student Minds, and um, it's just really good to be here, especially um, specifically for a student mental health um, conference. Um, so, Student Minds is really proud to be the UK's leading mental health charity. Um, hopefully, you would have heard from us either through our logo or some of our work or some of our campaigns or some of our digital work. 
But hopefully in the next 20 minutes, I'll be able to give you a little bit more insight in terms of what we do. Um, and um, hopefully you'll all have some takeaways to um, bring back to your uh, like peers and um, back when you're at university, back when you're back at university. Um, so we are really here to empower students across both England and Wales to look after their mental health, but not only just their own, but also supporting others and to be able and to be able to also create change. I think that supporting others is really important um, because peer-to-peer um, -peer support really has a really transformational. Um, um, uh, kind of impact in terms of really kind of really making a difference in terms of student mental health. Uh, we, um, during the pandemic, um, we adapted really quickly to respond to the student mental health crisis um, through the creation of student space. Um, we are extremely proud of what we have been able to achieve um, with our partners with student mental health and across the higher education sector and to, support, to really support students to navigate the uncertainty um, that everyone was faced with. But I, um, I have a younger sister who was at university at the time, and seeing her navigate university through the pandemic, with lockdown, with all the restrictions, I was just looking at her as like, I do not know how she is doing it. Like, I mean, I thought it was hard when I was at university, but I was like, geez. So like everyone who's like navigated it and come through the other end, I really think is like kudos to every single one of you. Um, mental health is obviously not a new topic, um, and it's not a new but the pandemic has brought it to the forefront of everyone's attention in a way that has never really been and has, that has never really been seen before. Student mental health is intrinsically linked to university life, influencing how well you do in your assignments, in your lectures, in your course, but more than anything, how well you're able to feel connected to the peers and people around you. When I was at university between 2005 and 2011, a little bit of a while ago, um, though I really enjoyed the lectures and absorbed the student experience to the, to the full, um, probably mostly we had a 10 pounds all you can drink um, nightclub and I definitely had one or two many takeaways which where is most of my student loan went. However, um, I also experienced mental health challenges which led me to nearly drop out completely out of my degree course um, and fail one of my key component, um, um, key component uh, modules that I only found out later down the line was actually critical for me to be able to um, be accepted on the dissertation module, which of course the dissertation helps you to graduate. All, in, all interlinked. Um, I remember very distinctively when I got told that I had failed that module um, and that real feeling of failure and what my future was going to be like. Um, and that was really, really scary. I was absolutely crushed and overwhelmed with a real deep feeling of failure. But life had genuinely gotten really, really hard and the missed grade wasn't out of lack of trying. I was trying so hard to just exist that I was too exhausted to have the energy to study at the same time. I had to get a letter from my therapist at the time to explain my condition and what was going on, and hopefully be able to discuss with the university um, advisors for a second opportunity of success. I want you to know, and everyone here, that, th that though your mental health may leave you feeling like it hinders some parts of your life, that it is not the whole of you, your mental health is actually a testament of your strength, not a sign of weakness. As a student, I campaigned on improving student mental health at the university through lobbying the university and the students' union because I knew that without positive mental health, there was no university life, quite simply. And now, somewhat 11 years later, I think it's still very true today. Student Space was created um, in August 2020 as a targeted intervention designed to address mental health needs um, caused by COVID-19. With thanks to the partnership for funding of Office for Students and Higher Education Funding Council for Wales. Earlier this year, we were really excited to announce a three-year extension to our work thanks to the funding of our two core partners to enable us to really continue to support your student mental health um, and to ensure that it remains at the top of the university agendas, but also within the wider mental health sector, healthcare and government. 
We really want to focus on um, pro providing high quality psychoeducational uh, content and increasing our digital mental health intervention. It is really clear that in the coming months and years, students will be faced with very high and competing pressures whilst at university that goes beyond the lecture and seminar rooms, with many still impacted by the effects of COVID, both in terms of personally or with, um, in terms of wider within their family lives and friendships. Adding on top the rising cost of living, climate change, employability challenges, transition points, the war in Ukraine, and general feelings of uncertainty. Um, even like, as I said earlier, in terms of like me seeing my sister go through university, I, the challenges that you guys are facing right now is definitely um, a lot, <laughs> I have to say. And so I think it's really important for us, organi for our organizations like us at Students Minds to really acknowledge the reality um, of that. So our role as Student Minds is to um, connect um, the dots between mental health and mental health services and the university student experience. And specifically ensuring that minoritized groups um, are um, have the right special the right specialist support to really thrive and succeed um, whilst at university. It is important to highlight that um, with um, especially looking through in terms of quality and diversity um, and mental health, that um, not all students are faced with the same challenges um, when navigating university life. Um, this is why here at um, Student Minds, we're really passionate about making sure that um, inclusion is really embedded within our mental health services support. Um, and we do that by commissioning specialized um, tailored services, so uh, mental health charities, to be able to uh, make it more accessible for um, everyone here. Um, we really understand that um, we cannot be specialists in every single mental health condition and more than anything that we can't be specialists in terms of every single mental in every single um, communities and student communities um, with that um, we are hoping or we aim to um, ensure that um, we really don't just say that we want to be inclusive but we actually deliver um, on our commitment and um, that is really taking into account our uh, um, health inequalities that are only getting, I promise you this is an optimistic talk, but it's only getting worse, the health inequalities, health inequalities. Um, and so it's important for us to, um, to play our part in terms of like readdre readjusting those parameters. Students from marginalized um, communities are at higher risk of experiencing mental health, especially those with multiple protected characteristics, such as race and disability. Um, you may have known, you may have heard of um, a really great um, individual, an academic called Kimberly Crenshaw. Um, if you haven't heard, I recommend every single one of you to research um, because um, her concept is absolutely amazing, and she's the one who uh, constructed the term intersectionality, um, which is a concept that highlights how multiple forms of discrimination can impact an individual. For example, I am black, obviously, a woman, I have disabilities, and I am gay. Individually, these identities create barriers and challenges as I navigate the world. But the biggest challenge is when those identities intersect or meet in the middle and create more complex and nuanced barriers. Now, if you put this in the context of mental health, we are then faced with various health inequalities. At Student Minds, we've worked really, really hard to try and and reshift that kind of whole di um, to reshift the whole that whole discourse. But we really understand also that it is very much a long-term aspiration and not a quick fix solution. So the pandemic has has transformed and accelerated the whole world to embrace technology. And how, and how that can really increase accessibility, reach, and impact. Though technology has opened doors, we should not remain complacent in the idea that, is, that it means that we're creating mental health, mental health services that are accessible for all. Digital poverty impacts many of our students, young people, and community members, and therefore, Completely a completely digital approach could shut down the door on so many who need mental health support. 
So for example, this is why it's really important that this conference has a hybrid model of both being digital and in person, because um, it kind of, and that should be also reflected in terms of how mental health services are delivered. Just as much as organizations have adapted to a hybrid model, we as services need to adopt and maintain a blended approach to mental health care. At Shoot Minds, we have really invested in our digital um, infrastructure, infrastructure sorry, to um, provide easy access support and curated co-creation with students, backed with clinical review and research. It is important for us, especially for is it, sorry, it is important for us to be offering safe and reliable services, whilst also ensuring that, our, that they are accessible, especially for, especially for students with disabilities, um, such as um, being neurodivergent um, and, yeah, such as being neurodivergent. We are really proud that our work has been evidence-based through research, consultations, and outreach work, responding directly to the pulse and needs of students. With our partnership with Artaline, we have carried out various research projects to understand the unique challenges that students face. Many are experiencing a heightened sense of loneliness, anxiety, and struggling to make friends after what was probably two, two and a half years of digital interaction, transferring to in-person events, in-person lectures, and in-person connections can be really, really challenging. And so it's really important for us as an organization to help students within that transition. So we are really keen for every student across England and Wales to know about student space and student minds. So that's why we're really excited to be here with you today. But we really need your support to ensure that it reaches everyone, to, re to ensure that it reaches everyone. To deliver a new approach to mental health, we need more than anything to listen to you, ask you what you need, and then for us to have the courage to be able to deliver on it. It's less about uh, building skyscrapers or delivering um, ther therapy pet therapy dog sessions um, on campuses, but more about ensuring that on the ground we are building, well, the, the, the ground that we are building on is solid, that we have the right equipment, the right tools, and an open mind to creating services that, cre that cater for not only our students of today, but we, are, we stay adaptable for the students of tomorrow. The pandemic has clearly showed us that we are able to unlock significant changes and resources when we collectively join up services together, think creatively, and take and take and tap in into multidisciplinary approaches. We must retain this agile approach in how we deliver our services, carrying forward the lessons learned from the pandemic and, in, and, embedding, the, and embedding them consistently outside of crisis interventions and into long-term interventions. We owe it to you to remain flexible. Sorry, two seconds. We owe it to you to remain flexible and committed to creating an inclusive um, and accessible mental health support. Your mental health does not end once you finish university. Many young professionals and early careers will be, will be worried or anxious about how things will look as graduates and being reassured that the same access, understanding and care will be in place within the workplace. A good employer will support you to succeed and not see your mental health as a hindrance, but a strength. It is my hope that over the talks and sessions of today, that they help you to not only ignite your passion for student mental health, but also have the practical tools to create change. Though it may seem like many years since I was at university campaigning for better mental, better mental health, it is really great to see that all of you um, are here and still committed to carrying the torch forwards. Student wellbeing will always, always be linked to um, sorry, two seconds. Student well-being will always be linked to universities, but it is my hope that we all continue to be committed to think boldly, work strategically, but more than anything, that organisations like us at Student Minds never forget to truly to truly listen to what you need, and together to strive to never stop to redefine student mental health. 
We need to ensure that this conversation remains in the top of universities and charities' agendas, strategies and resources, because I genuinely believe that together we can really create change in terms of student mental health. Thank you.